All right, y'all. I am training for my first ultra marathon. I'm about five months in now. The ultra that I'm training for is a 50 mile ultra marathon in Bryce Canyon, Utah. It's got elevation change of about 7,000 feet. So it's a pretty extreme ultra marathon. The elevation range is between 7,000 to 9,000 feet. For my first ultra, well, my first ultra that I've trained for, I have run 150K just on a whim without very much training. I don't recommend that. But for my first real ultra to me, the first one I've actually trained for, I felt like this was a really extreme one to choose. But when I was in the process of trying to figure out what ultra I might want to run, this was the only ultra that actually got me excited to run 50 miles, as crazy as that sounds. I thought, I would want my first ultra marathon to be a more mild one, maybe one not run at elevation and one without that much elevation gain. But like I said, I couldn't find inspiration in any other ultra other than the Bryce Canyon 50 miler. To add to that, as I moved forward in my research on ultra marathon training and how to go about doing it and how to go about picking an ultra marathon and stuff like that, I found that the most common thread among ultra marathoners and the most common piece of advice from seasoned ultra marathoners was choose a race that inspires you. Before anything, the race that you choose has to inspire you. And that really validated me in choosing Bryce Canyon 50 miler, even though it's probably gonna be a lot tougher than most ultra marathons. It's going to be very difficult. So I wanna take a step back really quick and kind of explain what my background is. And I wanna talk about how I ended up deciding to run a 50 miler. I wanna talk about what I've been doing. And then I wanna talk about my plan. To start with my background, I grew up in sports. I didn't start running until my senior year of high school. I ran cross country my senior year. I wasn't very fast. I think my fastest 5K was probably in the 21 minute range. Once I got to college, I didn't really run very often, but I stayed active. I lifted weights. I did some swimming and I, I ran here and there. I believe it was my sophomore or my junior year in college. I was inspired when I learned about David Goggins and Jesse Itzler. So I decided to run my first marathon. The training for that was kind of a conglomeration of stuff I found on Google. So it was really me just going out for runs and just running certain mileages every day that I thought were fit. And I would do long runs on a specific day of the week. And I thought that's how I could train for my first marathon. I went and ran it with no food or nutrition or anything. And it was a rough experience. After that first marathon, I ran another one six weeks later. And then on a whim, I did the 50K. A couple years later, fast forward to now, I was talking to a friend on the phone who recently got into running ultra marathons and he said he has wanted to run a 50 miler he had a, a 50k on his schedule but he also wanted to run a 50 miler and within five minutes I decided I was gonna run a 50 miler now that brings me to my training for this 50 miler which to me has been completely perspective changing on the sport of running I thought like most people that in order to get good at running you have to go out and run is as hard as you can for as long as you can whatever distance you set out so if I'm running three miles it's gonna be a pretty good three miles might not be a race, but I'm going to run it really hard so that I feel a lot of pain every time I run. No pain, no gain, right? And as I started learning about how to actually train running, when I first decided to do this 50 miler, I thought it was going to be a grueling time training for it. Well, I quickly realized within a couple weeks and some research that actually 80% of your runs should be so easy that you can hold a conversation. That was something that got me really excited about training because I realized 80% of my runs wouldn't be that hard. And the other 20% are your fast days and those are the days that do help you increase your speed and you're supposed to run them really fast. And so the great thing about this 80-20 method of running is, is what it's commonly called is that 80% of the time you get to run slower and relax and that may seem boring to some people but then when you go and run fast you get to appreciate it and go all out. That principle, that 80-20 principle has completely guided my running since I started five months ago. Again, because I wasn't really running much before I started this 50 miler. If you're just going out and running that medium pace where it's not easy, but it's not hard, you'll see some benefits at first, but over time you're just gonna plateau and get tired and that's not the proper way to get faster. And so for the past five months, what have I done the past five months? The 50 mile training plan that my friend Dan and I got was from a coach named Jason Coop and it's a 20 week program. So it's about a five month program. And so for the first month or two, I just ran slow and I was building what people call your aerobic base. After that first month or two, I started incorporating some speed work, some fartlicks, which is just running fast for a period of time and running slow in the middle of 
some distance of a run. And then once our training plan started, I started following that. And so what our training plan looks like, and I should be able to show some of it on the screen here, there are different sections divvied up over the course of the 20 week training program. It first starts with intervals, which intervals are running sessions that are meant to stress your VO2 max, the maximum amount of oxygen your body can take in during exercise and use as fuel. We go through that phase for about four to six weeks, I believe. The next phase we go into is tempo runs, which is challenging your lactate threshold, which is stressing your lactate threshold in order to teach your body how to utilize lactate as fuel and clear it out of your body faster. Lactate and the associated hydrogen ions that come with its formation are what are responsible for fatigue in the muscles and what cause them to eventually slow down and cause you to stop. From there, we go into a, a steady state run section, I guess, a steady state run section of our training. It's less particular and it's more of training you how to run fast, especially in a race situation, but you're not running at your lactate threshold because that's only sustainable for about 40 to 60, up to 80 to 90 minutes in elite athletes, but it's training you how to run fast and get used to running fast and train your body and practice running fast so that when you're in that race situation, it's a comfortable thing and your body has been trained to do it. And then you have your aerobic easy runs, which we don't really have a section on the aerobic runs. Those are just those 80% of the miles where we're not doing tempo or we're not doing intervals or we're not doing steady state. Those other 80% are our aerobic runs in that range of recovery pace, which is really easy story time pace. And then our more aerobic threshold pace, not lactate threshold, but aerobic threshold threshold pace where having a conversation starts to become challenging, but it's not difficult, it's doable, but you have to take some breaths here and there, stuff like that. That's what my training looks like. That's the race that I'm doing. I just wanted to update you guys on what was going on. I'm about to go for a run today. Today I have a 90 minute endurance run, which is one of those aerobic threshold runs. And mixed in to that run, I have three tempo runs, which will each be eight minutes long that I'm supposed to run at my lactate threshold with four minutes of recovery paced running in between to recover between intervals. Tomorrow I have a two and a half hour run which I'll probably get maybe 13 to 14 miles in. I've been doing a mixture of road and trail. I have a marathon coming up that's a part of my training program that is on the road but my ultra as we've talked about is in the mountains and there's a lot of elevation change so I spend a lot of time here especially on my long runs running these hills and these trails here in Jacksonville Florida in order to uh, train that stimulus of going up and going down. So those are all specifics that I can get into in later videos but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what my training looks like and what I'm up to with this with this ultra thank you guys for tuning in I think that's everything let me check yep so I'll uh, I'll come back with another video in a week or two to update you guys maybe on something a little more specific but for now this is ultra marathon training episode one thanks for listening